Hello, you've caught me writing a list of all the games I've finished over the last year. <coughs> Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. Don't laugh, it isn't funny. The reality is I'm just so busy. You know, this job really takes it out of you. I have to walk all the way up these stairs to get to the free drinks fridge. I have to lean this far to turn my desk fan on. And Nathan makes me write one whole video every week. It's hard, okay? But not as hard as these seven games I've written down on this other list. I haven't finished any of them. That's because only hardcore gamers will have completed this lot, a lineup of games so devilishly hard, all the footage we captured from their later levels mysteriously just vanished. It was really weird, I don't know what happened. Look, here's Demon Souls being an unrelenting so-and-so with its traps and naughty enemies deliberately hiding around corners and behind doors. This PS3 exclusive predecessor to Dark Souls gets on the list because it was the first release in ages to remind us the games aren't just about having fun and going, ooh, at all the graphics. In the shallow difficulty waters of 2010, you describe yourself as having finished a game, whereas Demon Souls ripped us back to an age where you'd bellow in angry triumph, I've beaten the game. Demon Souls wasn't there to be played, it was there to be fought, probed and patiently chiselled away at, revealing a hardcore RPG masterpiece that fused intelligent combat with evocative environmental storytelling. <laughs> Where is my drink? Look, I'm not saying I'm an angry gamer. If I was, we'd probably have way more subscribers. All I'm saying is that at the end of Killzone 2, where you have to fight teleporting gun cheek Colonel Radek and an entire battalion of Hellgast troops, I got so angry I took the disc out on the PS3 and crushed it with my bare hands. It was so hard. I must have tried it at least 30 times. The ending of Killzone 2 holds a special place in my heart because it remains the only time in my gaming life where I've just had to give up and say, there is no physical way I can get my fingers to perform the necessary movements to beat this thing. It's not like my fingers aren't a talented bunch of digits either. Look, I can do that wiggly thing with them and also wind up my pinky. So that just goes to prove how disc snappingly difficult Killzone 2 is. If you finished it, then I don't believe you. Go away. Oh look, colours, comic relief, jumping. This must be one of those nice platforming games made for children that are really, really easy. It's not, it's Jack 2, a GTA-esque action adventure from Naughty Dog that uses its own brilliance as a distraction from its diamond-encrusted difficulty level. Who remembers this bit? It's right at the beginning for crying out loud. Normally you'd be skipping merrily through Impossible to Die tutorial land at this point, but Jack 2 has you running from a demon laser tank while avoiding automated turrets and leaping across rotating platforms. Then there are time sections where you've got to haul your hover bike through a packed slum of hazards and crimson guards, shooty bits against what seems like a never-ending army of metalheads, and a final boss battle we'd rather just not mention. Apparently Jack 2's thorny difficulty was in response to feedback on the original Jack and Daxter that the game was too easy. Well, I did some investigating and we found the man who submitted that feedback. Well, you don't want life to be too easy, do you? You know, it's, it's nice to have a challenge. It's, it's nice to punish yourself. It's why I drink boiling nails every morning and smear me undies in fresh chilli paste. It's good, it's chastening. That's why I wrote to Naughty Dog about Jack and Dexter the Precursor Legacy. It wasn't hard enough. Jack 2, on the other hand, Perfect. There he is. Oof! That is for that bloody laser tank. I bet he'd like Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 as well, a mercilessly tough hack and slasher that's less about hacking and slashing than parrying and parrying and dodging and parrying and dying in that order. It's also about screen-sized boss battles that make Ryu Hayabusa and his thigh-hugging ninja onesie feel decidedly outmatched, like if Dave had to, I don't know, 
fight a dinosaur or something. Ninja David is one skillful fighter, however. Master his techniques and you'll skewer even the toughest bosses. Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 requires patience, perseverance and skill, but conquering its mountainous challenge is oh so satisfying. Totally worth it. Oh, cheers, Dave. Entry number five comes from a lost age of gaming. A lost age called 1998, where Lara Croft hadn't even heard of the word reboot, and Nathan Drake's ancestor was running around smacking goats. It was from this sea of 32-bit gaming brilliance that a little-known RPG called Alundra emerged. And my god, that game had teeth. Massive, noob-shredding gnashers that had lesser gamers scurrying under their Spyro the Dragon comfort blankets. I remember picking it up after having been introduced to the magical world of role players by the comparatively breezy Final Fantasy VII. Oh look, said little 11-year-old me, here's another game about a man with cool hair and a magic sword. Please mum, I'll do the washing up for two whole weeks if you buy me this game. I didn't do any of the washing up. Instead, I was grounded for screaming so much at the television. Because Alundra wasn't like Final Fantasy VII. It didn't have materia and chocobos and taking it in turns to hit things. No, it had top-down dungeon crawling, brutal combat and puzzles so hard they scrambled my brain. And worse yet, it was flipping brilliant which meant I had to play it anyway. I never finished it and in the end my mum got so sick of all the shouting that she secretly traded it in at Electronics Boutique for Ninja Shadow of Darkness. Thanks, Mum. Do you know how much copies of Alundra go for on eBay these days? At least £17. Continuing with the theme of golden oldies that ruined our thumbs, who remembers Beautiful Joe on PS2? It was glorious and made by some of the talented folk who went on to form Platinum Games and deliver us action gems like Bayonetta, Vanquish and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. So if you don't know Beautiful Joe, you can make a pretty good guess as to what the game was like. Hard, obviously, and with lots of hitting. It was also mad with a story about a normal man called Joe who is sucked into video land where he becomes a superhero and runs sideways, kicking things and using special powers. There was a lunatic intensity to the action in Beautiful Joe that ensured only those with hyper thumbs and expert hand-eye coordination could succeed. Well, I don't have either of those things, but funnily enough, my personality does change noticeably when I inhabit video land, so, you know, that's interesting. Okay, cut. Good take, Rob. It's taking ages this week. Do you want to go on the veto whilst we set up the next shot? I hate games. We had a bit of a dilemma choosing the last game on our list. There were a number of candidates, like the aforementioned Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, but in the end we plumped for Devil May Cry 3. For my money, the toughest of Dante's adventures, mainly because I wanted to show this cutscene where he kills all the things and eats the pizza. <laughs> so cool! It's a good job I like this cutscene as well because I didn't get to see too many of the others. And that's because, as well as being arguably the best action title on PS2, Devil May Cry also made me exceedingly angry. Give us a like, why don't you? And also subscribe so I can keep making more of these stupid videos. Bye for now.